If you get it right, grappling can be an amazing tool for conditioning rugby players. Hey guys, how are you? It's Fraser here, strength coach for the Biela Bears, and today we are talking judo for rugby. So if you're a current subscriber of this channel then you'll know that I'm a strength coach for rugby players and this channel is full of tips, tricks and takeaways that help improve your athleticism. What you might not know uh, is that I'm a judoka. In my part time I enjoy doing judo. Um, I've done it for a while now, I took it up as, a, as, a, as an adult and in 2014 I received my black belt. So all that means is that I have competitive time on the tatami and I can really appreciate from a strength and conditioning point of view but also uh, as a judoka what principles and ideas that we can take from judo and apply it into a rugby conditioning setting. I should mention now that I did a video on dynamic correspondence or training transfer. I'll put a link to that just here and that'll give you a bit more information and background around um, how you can bring exercises or how to categorize exercises from exercise A to on pitch performance, for example, the back squat for rugby players, how does that, what, what level of training transfer does that have to rugby performance? Some coaches will say, well that's not rugby specific, that's useless. Some coaches will say, well like that, that can help leg strength, which can help X, Y and Z, speed, script, whatever, depends on the person. That video will give a little bit of clarity on training transfer in general. So what we're talking about today is judo principles and ideas and how that can transfer onto improved rugby uh, preparation and performance. Cinque, quattro, tre, due, uno, tempo! So okay. guys, without further ado, let's first talk about when judo can really fit in well in, a, in an annual plan for rugby, and that would be the GPP phase, so the early uh, pre-season, general physical preparation phase um, of the annual calendar. Before we look at close contact grappling drills, I want to talk about the first principle of judo for rugby, and I've not seen this in other videos, um, wrestling for rugby or judo for rugby, and that is Ukemi. Okay, Ukemi um, talks about receiving techniques, okay? The ability to, to get through and receive a technique without any uh, harm coming to you. So it's really, really important. Why is it important for rugby? Well, in rugby, the most contacts you're going to have is with the floor, not with other players, it's going to be with the floor, okay? So it makes sense to uh, be able to absorb your body um, in, in various different positions um, without getting harmed or injured in any way. Okay, in modern day rugby, you know, it's a chaotic environment. You end up in positions um, that are less than perfect for you and being able to uh, roll off certain, certain tackles or contact situations can be really beneficial. The other thing about Kemi is it, it doesn't take a lot to teach. It can be really quite simple to implement in warm-ups, specifically in the general physical preparation phase, and then you can bring those learned skills and drip feed them in at other points of the season whenever is appropriate for, uh, for your situation. You can also use a Kemi type drills, like gymnastic type drills, as a conditioning tool, which is something we'll talk about in a second. Guys, if you like this video and you're finding it useful, please do consider hitting the like button. That'll let me see that I need to make more videos like this. The ideal time of the season to fit in judo or grappling based activities is pre-season. There's two reasons for this. Reason one is conditioning, which we'll talk about in a second because I appreciate that's a bit of an umbrella term. We'll get a little bit more specific on that in a second. Reason two is it's a, it's a good segue into more um, 
contact situations, more specific contact situations in rugby. So from perhaps medium, long distance where there's more collision based. Obviously judo, wrestling, etc. It's close quarters, there's bumps and knocks, but it's all without a whole lot of momentum. Like we're not teaching players um, to do big St. Aggies and things like that. So um, two reasons why, conditioning and a good segue into more collision based drills. As mentioned, grappling drills can be an amazing tool for conditioning for rugby. Now in a previous video, I looked at how to get fit for rugby. I'm gonna link that here. And it had an aerobic capacity emphasis. Using grappling based drills is really great for improving anaerobic capacity. The reason being is rugby players generally uh, have low skill in grappling and so they they're like uh, bulls in a china shop. They see red and they just go for it. They're put in a competitive, combative situation. And I'll show you how to make that safe in a second. Um, but they see red and they go for it. So my guys, for example, will let this video roll. We're doing 45 seconds of work. Now the maximum you're gonna wanna do, let's say is, is 60 seconds. Okay, so my guys were doing 45 seconds of work with three minutes rest. And of course, you're gonna manipulate those times as you like. Um, but after those 45 seconds, they were gassed. And that's where you want it to be. You want it to be almost like a max effort 400 meter run, to put it in context for people to understand running a little bit better than grappling. So after this 45 seconds, absolutely gassed. They need three minutes just to almost recover and get back in um, on the tatami and then do it all again, all right? In this video, I cover three drills very quickly which give the guys the skills to understand how to win when we come to the conditioning element of grappling. It'll make sense in a second, but if you're looking for more drills, let me know in the comment section and I'll be able to do a part two um, and give you more ideas around specific drills that you can implement. So the first drill we go to is Kezigatami, it's super simple judo. Uh, I also show the players how to escape, but for the first period, we're just showing them the, the movement and then um, they have 10 seconds to escape the guy on bottom. Now, it's easy enough for the guy on top to hold, but once the player on the bottom knows the escape, not so easy. The point is that we're just showing them these positions, these pins, so that when it comes to the live wrestling, they kind of have something to aim for and go to to, to win the fight in the 45 seconds. So the rules of, of, of the 45 seconds was, player that wins um, is the player that can hold and control someone's, um, their opponent with their back on the ground for 10 seconds. The second position is Munigatami. Excuse my pronunciation um, of Japanese, I'm Scottish, so I think that is as close as I'm going to get uh, Munigatami, but it's just side control, okay? Again, it's another pin, we work up, they have to uh, hold the partner down for 10 seconds. It's easy enough to do if you're the guy on top, it should be easy enough to do if you're the guy on top. Again, I'll show them how to escape, some of them will remember, some of them won't, but that's what makes it interesting when it comes to that 45 second live knee wrestling judo situation because I want to give my players an opportunity to, to, to win, to make it competitive, and they win in this situation by pinning their partner down for uh, 10 seconds, all right? Either way, the clock stops at 45 seconds. Of course, you can manipulate um, the time and work rest ratio as is appropriate, but if you're staying in that uh, anaerobic capacity, I would suggest 60 seconds or less, and you'll, you'll see the guys just gas out um, around that time anyway, which is absolutely normal. Give them that three minutes rest and then fire them back in again. The third drill in this video lends itself well to the anaerobic alactic system, and that is um, stand-up wrestling, ball carrier against defender, five seconds for uh, the ball carrier to advance and score a try and the defender to not let that happen. Okay, it's so a five second burst. You can do this in repetitions with 25 seconds rest, five second burst, and you can do five or six of them before taking a big rest. It's a different type of conditioning. It's anaerobic, um, but it's working that anaerobic alactic system. So the short, hold your breath, stay strong, limited recovery, uh, and building things up that way. Again, that might be something you want to bring in later in, in the pre-season. Um, it depends on, on how you're organizing your training. Guys, you want to check out the video description for more uh, details on this and some more um, ideas that I've jotted down there. And of course, if you have questions, just fire in the comment section and I'm gonna get back to you. 
I'm gonna leave you in this video with a little bit of grappling from the guys because it's quite fun. You'll see how tired they get and you'll see that they have a good time and that everyone's safe. Thank you very much for watching this video guys. I will see you on the next one. Ciao for now, cheers.